offences in that area. Now here, Highways England have admitted that dozens of drivers are stranded on smart motorways every day. Uh, they've been telling that to MPs. They're promising to roll out new safety features. But campaigners say people are dying unnecessarily on the roads because drivers don't understand how the motorways work. Well, let's speak now to Richard Goddard, who's from the Campaign for Safer Roadside Rescue and Recovery. Uh, Richard, good morning to you. Just remind us how many of these smart motorways there are. Well, they're running out all over the country. They're on the M25. There's a new rollout on the M4. They're rolling out on the M3. They're rolling out on the M1. They're basically nationwide and they're, they're rolling out as fast as they possibly can. Uh, so you're saying smart but not necessarily safe enough. Why is that the case? Well, I'm not even saying smart because I don't believe that. I, th I think all lane running is what we're actually dealing with and they're a variant of um, smart motorways. You're 38% more likely to um, break down in a live lane on one of these so-called smart motorways and the safety, the safety mechanisms put in place, the technology to actually um, read when someone's actually broken down. If you can imagine driving and then coming to a stop in a live lane with nowhere to go, there's no hard shoulder, the general public are not made aware and educated properly on the safety on um, so-called smart motorways and they're in a very dangerous and precarious situation. Um, if, someone, if someone breaks down in that scenario that you've just described, what should they do? Well, to be perfectly honest, they can't do anything but sit there like a, a sitting duck and wait for Highways England or one of their haters to come and assist or maybe even the police to protect them. That, and that's the question that you're asking, what should they do? No one really knows what to do. The statistics that have been given out are simply not correct. And if you look at smart motorways or all lane running, they are just a cost-cutting exercise, more worried about saving money than actually saving lives. And the public needs to be made miles more aware than they are at the moment. There needs to be better education and there better be, must, must be more resources and better safety mechanisms put in place to protect the general public I, I and rescue and recovery figure, operators. Sorry, Richard, I don't know if you have figures on the numbers of deaths in accidents on these smart motorways. Um, well, there's been three, I believe, on the, the new part of the M1 in South Yorkshire. There's been, I think there was, there's, there was the one that, um, that uh, went to court um, on the M4, and that's part of the rollout. Um, I think there were three casualties there. There's many casualties. Not all of them are actually reported. If as many people were, were, were being killed, say, even in, during a war, they'd be on the news every night. People are dying and Highways England are not doing enough to protect them, to educate them and to save lives. We just have a moment left on this interview, Richard, but uh, in, in the absence of the sort of public information campaign that you're talking about, where can motorists look uh, as individuals to educate themselves? Well, there are various websites. What I would suggest to most people is look at where they're travelling, look and see if it is an actual smart motorway. If it is, please make sure that your car is going to make the journey. There is nothing worse than being made a sitting duck. Sitting on one of those live lanes at the risk of being hit. Because, I mean, it's 15 minutes before you're even detected sometimes with their technology. So you are a sitting duck. Make sure your vehicle is safe and make sure you know that you're going on a smart motorway and wh where the refuge areas are. The refuge areas are a mile and a half apart instead of 500 metres, which is what was agreed in the beginning. Yeah. Highways England need to look at that, Richard. better educate you and educate yourselves before you start to travel. It's vital Richard, to your we life. we must leave it there, but thank you very much for talking to us about that. Richard Goddard. A number of deaths.